Hey, what's happening? Tim with Nomad Trading. Going to talk about NIO, uh, UONE, and VIVE. So NEO, UONE, and VIVE are the three that I picked to, to speak about today. Um, they're the ones that I had my eye on uh, that traded a lot of volume and were kind of the crazier stocks of the day. Lots of day traders were uh, trading them and watching them, including myself. I personally made a hundred bucks uh, right out of the gate in a few minutes and then ended up losing uh, almost double that trying to short NIO. So not the best trading day for me. I was uh, I'm, you know, that's just kind of how it goes with trading and I trade small because I'm still consider myself uh, learning even though I've been doing it for a couple of years, but or a few years, but I'm um, make rookie mistakes like I did today on NIO. I mean, there's no uh, way around it. I'll get into that and show you what I did. And it's a, a mistake that I've made multiple times. So uh, yeah, we'll get into that here in a second. But anyway, I'm going to jump over into my screen and we'll talk about some of the stocks today and what was moving, things to look for, etc. Here we are in my computer. Uh, this is NIO. Let's actually go back and kind of do things in order. So let's see. First off the bat, it's, it started off a bad morning for me. It could have been an awesome morning, but I ended up with a gigantic case of FOMO. And things are kind of broken up for me because my work is on strike. So I've got to go down to my work because of uh, our, our union contract was up. The company and the, and the union haven't reached an agreement yet. So therefore, I have to go down to my work and uh, walk the picket line and whatnot um, in order to get strike pay. It's a long story. But anyway, got to go down there every day. And it just happens to be in the morning. So kind of kills my ability to trade every day, which is why I haven't been making videos um, every single day is because I'll, a lot of times I miss the big moves. So I end up uh, having to just scalp a little bit in the afternoon um, or sometimes pre-market. But anyway, UONE, this thing was an absolute monster. I wake up early, you know, I was up at the butt crack of dawn and I watched this thing hit 12. If you look at the daily chart, um, up here at 12, there is, you know, there starts to be resistance here in the 10, 11 area, and then up here at 12. So right off the bat, the thing is knocking on 12's door and I'm already thinking, oh, you know, great. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, get in this thing at 12 and get short. Well, E-Trade, one thing that sucks about E-Trade is E-Trade never has shares to short of basically any of these stocks. If, you, if you're trading with E-Trade and you actually find shares to short, be wary because a lot of the times when I found shares to short, those end up being the biggest squeezes. Uh, for instance, NIO, I don't know if they ended up having shares to short on E-Trade because I was trading on my CMEG account later on for that reason. But anyway, E-Trade Pro, just a little tip, if you find shares to short on E-Trade, watch out for the monster squeezes because E-Trade just sucks when it comes to having shares to short when it, and uh, momentum stocks like low float stocks, momentum trades, uh, the stuff that I like to scalp and, and buy, sometimes short, etc. E-Trade never has shares available, almost never of those particular stocks. So be wary if they do. Anyway, uh, so E-Trade did not, when I, when I looked to short it this morning, could not find shares to short. Um, I, I, I did check, uh, and it was about just under 12 bucks. So I almost topped it perfectly. And I went to CMEG and CMEG, they had shares to short, but they don't do pre-market trading 
until uh what is it 7 30 i believe so i i wanted to short it at 12 perfectly topped it saw the resistance uh saw it was shooting up and thought man that thing is way overbought because i can't remember if there was not news at all or if there was weak news let's see uh, yeah, there I couldn't find news on it. I don't even know why it spiked other than the fact that it's a former runner that's gone up like crazy in the past to 60 bucks roughly <laughs> from uh, 250. It's one of those ones that not that long ago was just unbelievable how quickly and how high it can go. Today was the same way and I don't know if there was news or if it just started spiking got a little bit of volume and spiked up. But anyway, uh, long story short, I tried to short it, actually got at the perfect spot, would have been shorting it at the perfect top, uh, just under 12, and CMEG would have allowed that because CMEG actually is really good, CMEG, about having shares to short on a lot of these low float momentum stocks. So they did have shares to short. However, they don't have pre-market trading until... I want to say it's 7.30. Um, let, me, uh, let me check that just so I'm not telling you all wrong, just in case it matters. Uh, I can look it up really quick. I know they didn't, I know they, I couldn't short it uh, when it was at 12 because they would not allow me their market hours. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yes, uh, pre-market trading, 6.30 my time, 7.30 Eastern. So, yeah, so I'm looking at the thing at 12, wanting to get in at short, would have been perfect. Uh, would have never even had any risk or any reason to cover because it never even came back up. It just came down, but uh, would have had to do it on CMEG. And at 7.30, this thing uh, was already down to under nine, as you can see uh, my time frame down here. Uh, so whenever I could have shorted it at CMEG, uh, the thing was already down from 12 to under nine. At that point, I'm thinking, I don't even know why this is up. I don't see the news on it. And this is a stock that's gone to over $50. So it's not something to play around with shorting. So at that point, I, I kind of gave up on it. I was like, you know, it's already down. And as soon as I short it, it's going to rip up and I'm going to be down uh, hundreds of dollars right off the bat. So I thought it was best to play it safe. Turns out, you know, then I end up going to work and all that. And I come back and look and see that the thing faded all day down back down to the fours. And it would have been an amazing short. I was trying to short uh, 500 shares of it. So you do the math. It would have been uh, several thousand dollars had I just shorted it even whenever I could. Anyway, so I had terrible FOMO on that. Started the day off, you know, sad about that, but um vive was another one that uh was big today it had news i believe let's see da, da, da. Uh, maybe not i didn't even have news that showed up on e-trade it probably did have news but it didn't show up on e-trade anyway i ended up just scalping this as a bounce off of uh vwap i believe let me think, was was that the one I tried to scalp? I know it's the one I made a hundred bucks on, but I'm trying to think where I actually took the trade. I think it was, it might have been, yeah, I think it was right here. I think I actually scalped it right here before I headed off to uh, down to my work. Um, took the trade as it got over that resistance right there. I believe that's when I just scalped it quick, got out of it, made uh, 100 bucks, like 90 some, 90 some bucks actually. 
then but nothing really spectacular there of course you know it would have been great had i actually you know could sit in front of my computer all morning and maybe i would have held it longer i don't know but had i held it longer it would have been awesome because the thing went all the way to a dollar almost a dollar fifty dollar forty five so uh yeah that would have been a massive awesome it was pretty much today was just a a, a fail <laughs> i'm sure you guys have had those days and today is that day for me uh i made 150 some bucks yesterday like uh 90 or something the day before that 200 and some the day before that so you know i've had a good string of um small winning days so I guess I was due for a, a, a down day. Unfortunately, CMEG with the commissions and the ECN fees and everything figured in my uh, 100 and let's see, what it was it? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, $184 loss on NEO just out of stubborn stupidity uh, wiped out my hundred dollar gain on vive and then so my pnl was minus 93 dollars but then with commission and ecn fees that's like uh, another 50 some dollars from my trading today in commissions and ecn fees and that's where i talk about cmeg getting you and how you got to watch out for the fees on cmeg because uh 93 dollar loss pnl wise is $150 loss when you figure in the ridiculous commissions and ECN fees that CMA charges. That's the price you pay for offshore brokers and being able to trade under the PDT rule. So you really got to make your winners count and not over trade because you just get completely destroyed by the commissions and ECN fees. Anyway, platform fees, all that crap, they, they completely screw you. I guess they don't screw you. You get what you pay for it. You don't have to trade under the PDT, but at the same time, compared to like E-Trade or one of the bigger companies who might not give you quite as good at executions, but they're commission free. And if you trade uh, like 30 times a quarter, uh, you don't even play for the platform. So anyway, there's some very definite big things, uh, big gains to be had trading with the bigger brokers but you gotta have that twenty-five thousand dollar account that's the downside that most people that are watching this video do not have so anyway back to the point uh made a little bit of money scalping this nothing to write home about um if you were lucky enough to buy this the breakout you would have had to have been super quick because it was a one minute candle basically at open uh that jumped up here because if you bought uh, past the high of day, the pre-market high of 95 cents, you would have had to somehow been super, super quick on the hotkeys. And then you get into that first halt and then it shoots up again and gets halted again. So not a whole lot of opportunity there. You're talking about getting in incredibly fast and getting back out uh, before it ends up dropping. There was an opportunity, but not a very good one. Other than that, uh, could have played the VWAP bounce right here for a decent amount. Uh, scalped it for a bounce off of VWAP for maybe 20 cents if you were lucky and timed it right. Nothing super great there. And the rest of the day, it would have been just a short off of uh, VWAP as it got rejected by VWAP the second time. It would have been a good short to fade uh, the rest of the day. Then we come to neo my arch enemy or nio however you say it nio and this is what i want to talk about where it's just stupidity on my part i know better than to do this and i've done it several times before and this stock all it did was squeeze this is a gigantic short squeeze the news all the news was the news was crappy it was just one analyst upgrading from sell to hold He's typically bearish on the stock and he upgraded from hold, from uh, sell to hold and then his price target moved from a dollar to $16. So when you think about that being the news, it's pretty ridiculous. And especially when you consider the thing goes uh, 
two dollars and sixty cents over that after hours uh, by the time after hours is over two dollars and sixty cents over that price target his price target for the year mind you um anyway all this was was a gigantic short squeeze and i knew better because i've done this before where i'm looking to short a stock because in my mind and you guys will get caught in the same traps that's why i'm talking about it uh in my mind the thing is is uh up way more than it should be because the news is is weak um, but what i should have been looking at what you should look at um, intelligent people would not be experienced traders not really intelligent people but you know experienced traders would know not to be shorting on such a green day as it's breaking out because if you look at uh, right here at 1650 it was breaking out that's when i was uh, attempting to short it and I just kept thinking you know it's just it's how it's why shorting is dangerous and in my mind I thought the news is weak and there's shares available to short I'm gonna short it because this thing is definitely gonna come back down the guy's price it's just one analyst the guy's price target 16 bucks um, so I'm looking at the daily and I, I know it's curling up but I was looking to just, I wasn't looking to uh, fade it all day long or anything. I just had it in my mind for whatever reason that when this thing gets up there, it's going to uh, fade back. So I'm looking at that 1650 area, already 50 cents above his yearly price target, the analyst that sparked this news to begin with. And so then I'm looking at the chart and I'm kind of looking at how things are playing out and it's in the afternoon and at this point it had uh, pulled back pretty good right here and broke through the 200 moving average so then it uh, curled up I'm trying to think exactly where I took the uh, trade at let's see it was somewhere in here i believe i thought that it would hit the uh, high of day resistance and it would fade because it had already pulled back pretty strong and then it had broken the 200. i should have been thinking hey this is curled up and i should have been thinking this thing is easy to get shares to short on now that's the key the key is when you when you look at a stock that has weak news and everybody knows it's weak news and then it's got a ton of volume and then you can get shares pretty easily to short that's when you have a recipe for a gigantic short squeeze so that's basically what all of this move is here i don't this here could have been short short squeeze could have been just a, a combination of that and people uh, buying it and momentum trading it whatever but definitely after it curled up and got to this point at that point you just have shorts covering including myself and i ended up holding it far too long being stubborn with it thinking you know this thing's definitely coming back down to vwap it's definitely going to at least come to vwap and i'm going to cover uh when it gets down back to these bottoms here um somewhere near vwap i just i had it in my mind stubbornly that that's going to happen the news is weak uh it just didn't make any sense to me and i've done it i've done this before several other times and it's always the same scenario where it's not in my wheelhouse i typically trade um low float momentum stocks i typically go long that's where i have most of my success is scalping long on flags and breakouts and um you know uh low float momentum stocks that's the name of my game that's what i've found success at and it's times that i get outside that box and that's the lesson that i'm trying to tell you guys you know i got outside my box and i thought i, I see this thing it didn't even pop up on my scanner because the float was way too high it's uh more of a blue chip stock i'm not even sure what the the market cap is on it but i'm sure it's pretty massive let me see uh, da, 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 da. let me see 
So yeah, the market cap is 17 billion and the public float is 900 million according to market watch. Uh, and I'll show that to you in case you guys are interested or don't know where to look. You can go to market watch, you can type in any stock and then you can look here. Sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not, but anyway, uh, 900 million public float market cap of 17 billion not at all the stocks that i make my money on so here i am getting out of my wheelhouse the the thing that's been making me consistently profitable and then i fall into that trap that happens to all of us i'm sure and i just get googly eyes at this thing and think oh man the, the news is weak and it's up uh so much and i'm gonna be able to just take it short for an easy fade back down to VWAP and then I'll get out of it. Not get greedy, no big deal. Definitely getting too far away from VWAP, it's gonna come back down and I'm gonna cover, make a, a quick uh, chunk of money. And instead, I, I completely throw out the window, the fact that that is not my wheelhouse, that's not what I trade, that's not the kind of stocks I trade, I don't typically short, uh, I'm more long biased, it's just completely the opposite of what I normally do, and yet I do it. And then I get stubborn, and I just keep thinking that, uh, oh, it's gonna, it's coming back down. It doesn't make any sense. It's going to come back down. Shorts are going to pile on. People are going to sell. Uh, anyway, long story short, don't do that. Stay in your wheelhouse. Do yourself a favor. Uh, I'm going to do myself a favor and put a little Post-it note up on my computer re reminding myself, you know, stick to what you know, the things that have been working for the last several months, the things that uh, typically make you money, do that. Don't just uh, think that you're gonna go out on a whim and, and get out of your wheelhouse and just start doing something totally different than what your strategy is because all of a sudden you think that you know, uh, you know better, you know, today. All of a sudden today I'm a, a, a shorting guru. No, that's how I've lost money in the past, and then I've done it in the exact same way. I can't remember um, what stock it was off the top of my head, but it was a very similar situation. And the thing, I did get stubborn with it because this was earlier in my trading career, and it ran for, it, it squeezed for two or three days. And eventually it did exactly what I thought it would do, and it came all the way back down, and I would have made a bunch of money on it. But by the time it had squeezed for two or three days, I ended up taking the loss and it was a huge loss, definitely a several thousand dollar loss. And I thought, wow, that was stupid. Why am I stubbornly holding that? If it's that easy to, to get shares on, for instance, if I can get shares on E-Trade, that tells me that it's a higher float, higher market cap stock um, that can be uh, turned into an epic squeeze basically so anyway don't do that yeah, if 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 it seems like the news is kind of uh, lame and it starts squeezing especially in the afternoon and going past the high of day just get out of it and I did end up doing that eventually I, I don't even remember where exactly I covered but ended up wiping out my gains for the day turning it into a big uh, not a big but you know a, a red day instead of a green day and that just sucks so don't do that don't go out on a whim on a whim and start doing something totally different than what your strategy is find out what works for you what kind of trader you are where you make your money uh, where your confidence is and stick with that I've said many times before to people that a lot of trading and being successful is confidence which comes from winning and you know having gains day after day, being consistent, then you get the confidence and then you have the ability to hold through what would make you panic sell uh, previously because you start knowing that, you know, it's going to work uh, or it's not. You kind of get a feel for it. The confidence is a big, big, uh, a big part of it. But anyway, the moral of the story is don't do stuff that's out of your box. Uh, stay, stay inside your, your box, whatever works for you. Just keep doing that. That's how all the successful traders that I know 
they typically specialize you know a lot of them do go both ways they've over the pro over the the uh the span of 10 years or whatever like nathan michaud or michaud from investors live i think it is investors underground uh he has i know recently i follow him and he's been working the last year or two on getting better at taking both sides of the move and he's been doing it for years and years one of the best traders there is and he's mastering that but until you get to that point just stick to one thing and try to master one thing and that's where i went wrong i went back to my old ways of thinking that all of a sudden i'm some shorting genius and end up losing all my profits don't do that and like i said if uh, if there's shares available to short at some of these brokers where there's typically not that's your first warning sign then uh if it's if it's a big green day with a ton of volume that's not the day to be shorting don't be shorting a giant green candle with a ton of volume that's not intelligent i don't know why i was doing that either so many things that i should not have done today that led to a green day turning to a red day but like i say in all my videos i'm not a trading guru i'm learning right alongside you i'm getting better i'm getting more consistent but i still slip into those bad habits now and then and i have to slap myself on the wrist and and remind myself that hey that's not what you do that's not how you've gotten consistent so don't do that anymore uh as far as predictions go nio i really don't have any prediction because like i said i've seen these stocks where the next day they gap down and they and they go back down to reality and i've also seen them squeeze literally for days if they get enough people trapped uh, enough shorts just keep piling into it and then keep having to cover um it's hard to it's hard to look at this as an inexperienced trader and tell that that's a short squeeze but you get a feel for it over the course of years and you can just tell that you know every time it's got a little red candle there's it's going to be followed by a green candle every time it pulls back you know it's going to get bought up because it's it's shorts that are just looking for any opportunity to get out every time it pulls back a little bit it gets bought up because the, the shorts are uh you just know that with the news being weak and and the way that the stock set up that people are piling on it on the short side and then they're just looking at every opportunity they can to cover so the thing never really pulls back in a significant way and it's trading after hours up here at 1860 and vwaps down here uh you know almost two bucks below that so just keep squeezing and squeezing so will it keep going tomorrow i don't know my gut tells me that it will gap down um i think the overall market will gap down if i was gonna place a, a guess on it but you never know the overall market just keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher which is beyond logic to me as well when you got uh airline companies laying off fourteen thousand people and still record unemployment all kinds of negative things out there in the economy um, just doesn't make any sense to me that we're still hitting all-time highs with the market but i'll take it i like it it'll ho hopefully keep the momentum stocks going and fire things back up i think that's why we've seen things slow down a little bit and go from uh, stocks that were climbing like crazy to seeing more often than not the the stock of the day a lot of the time is uh, a fade rather than climbing all day and i personally think that's because people kind of have this feeling that the market is getting a little top heavy a little overbought and might be in need of a, a pullback so there's not quite as many buyers in there but that's just my personal thoughts on it i think that there's a chance that the market gaps down tomorrow and i think there's a chance that nio also gaps down tomorrow but i don't hold overnight i wasn't holding a short position on an over overnight i i learned 
well, actually, that's, you know, I've talked about this in other videos, but that's the way that I lost almost $10,000 was I was in a, in a short just like this and I was stubborn and I kept holding it and the company got bought out. It just so happened that the company got bought out overnight. The news came out while I was short and I ended up waking up to an almost $10,000 loss. So I've learned over, over the years to not hold overnight unless I absolutely have to because it's just too risky. So anyway, that's all I got for today. That's my advice. Uh, stay in your wheelhouse. Don't short things that uh, have a, a, a huge float and lots of available shares to short and just continue to go up especially in the afternoon because they're just going to keep squeezing just get out of it do yourself a favor don't be shorting the gigantic volume green day uh, that is squeezing all day not smart don't be like me do the opposite of that and and stay in your wheelhouse for me that's buying breakouts and uh, low float momentum plays scalping uh, staying on the long side so Going to get back to that tomorrow and hopefully make up the loss from today with any luck. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Hopefully there's a lot of exciting plays. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. If you made it this far, make sure you comment down below. This was a long video, I know. I apologize. Sometimes I get a little bit wordy, but hopefully some of this stuff helps you guys out. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace out. God bless.